Today we are talking about three short films. Three. One involving cannibalism, another involving surrealism, and lastly, a film about vomiting for the sake of art. After I tell you about NordVPN, get ready for a weird disturbing breakdowns. Today's video is sponsored by NordVPN because your privacy needs protection. All that money you spend for internet, only for your ISP to spy on you, sell your data, and throttle your internet. Are you using public Starbucks Wi-Fi? It's even more dangerous with those wannabe hackers hanging around snooping on everybody. With NordVPN, you're hidden like you've got a thief ring. Military grade encryption that hides your IP address and searches from anybody and any company. No more throttling and no more black hats spying on you. One click can connect you to one of thousands of servers in over 60 countries, bypassing geo restrictions as well. Tubi is not available over in Europe, but NordVPN bypasses that restriction. Up to six devices can be connected to Nord. That's a lot of protection for your privacy that NordVPN can do. You can power up your internet today with the help of NordVPN. If you go to nordvpn.com slash spookyrice, you get a huge discount off a two-year plan plus four additional months free and a risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to nordvpn.com slash spookyrice, you get a huge discount off a two-year plan plus four additional months free, risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee. Thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. Our first film is Adoration, directed by Olivier Smolders, based on the crimes of Issei Sagawa. Issei Sagawa murdered, cannibalized, and raped the corpse of Rene Hartveld back in 1981. He was arrested in France, but a judge found him legally insane, so instead of prison, he went to a mental institution. Then he was transported back to Japan, but due to a legal technicality, he was able to be released from the mental institution and has been free to this day. Treated as a celebrity almost, he's heavily hated now, but in 1987, a film was made about his crime. That's really all I need to say. Let's talk about this short movie. It's only about 20 minutes. If you want to see what happens, including all the messed up parts, stay tuned for the breakdown. Cue to Gohan. The movie begins with a young Japanese guy picking eye boogers out of our eye. It seems like he is polishing our point of view so we get a clear view of the extreme things he will do for love. Soon he brings a woman inside. She also seems to be aware of whatever is capturing the view. She's a party woman. When he flashes the camera again, it transitions to them having dinner together. This actually is an entirely different view of the room. It's been flipped around. They give a toast to the times and enjoy a nice romantic conversation. Soon he gets around the camera and records her. She looks like Elaine Bennis with that wall of Jericho hair. She begins to speak French. I'll play it here and maybe one of you could be very kind to translate some of it. La 13e revient. C'est encore la première. Et c'est toujours la seule. Ou c'est le seul moment. Car es-tu reine au toi, la première ou dernière? Es-tu roi? Toi le seul ou le dernier amant, aimé qui vous aima du berceau dans la bière, celle que j'aimais seule, même encore tendrement. Okay, I'll stop it there because it's quite lengthy. The two are enjoying a nice evening, it seems, recording passages from the book she is reading. Again, a lengthy French reading, but afterwards, she curves him when he goes in for a kiss. She seems uncomfortable now, very uncomfortable. It creeps me out how quickly things change between these two. Without speaking a single audible word, the man has made her dislike him. He holds the recorder to her as she reads more passages before he leaves the room. She continues to read, but he returns with the rifle in hand, and he kills the woman with the shot in the back and stands above her for a time before putting the gun down. Now. We see above as he lays with her body. He performs sexual acts on her body and rids all of her clothes. He cuts and eats a part of her body and sits beside her recording. We see behind him that her leg has been cut off and he grabs more pieces to cannibalize. 
Lastly, he gets the camera again and records the bloody scene close up. Her arm cut off as well. Almost reminds me of the Black Dahlia, minus her torso being attached and no facial mutilation. He next stabs himself in the abdomen and the camera drops down. The film ends with adoration. Uh, first the guys who killed Junko Furuta, and now this. I don't like killers being released early, whether it's because of sentencing or technicalities. Well, now let's move on to the next short disturbing film, Dislandia. Dislandia is a short serial film released in 2005 directed by Brian Viveros, similar to Eraserhead and Begotten. It's the kind of movie that flies right past logic. We just follow some little girl named Lindsay around a forgotten and abandoned landscape. That's about all I can say. This came out in 2005, that means I was 6 years old. I was playing M rated video games since I was 3. Lindsay here, she might be a similar age to me right now. Well, you want to see what happens, including all the messed up parts, stay tuned for the breakdown. Cue the Gohan. This Landia begins with the little girl, Lindsay, walking inside a room. You can hear her footsteps very loudly, sound like she's wearing some heavy ass Dark Souls armor. Next, a pulsating sound is playing. I'm sure I got it playing for you right now. She's drawing like my two-year-old little sister. Draw two seconds and on to the next page. All she's doing is drawing harsh circles. You can tell she has some kind of brace on her leg, but other than that, she's just imagining circles. Where's this little girl? Where? What is this? What time period? Why is she wearing a mask? Whose fingers are these? Not even the combined mental powers of L and Light Yagami could answer any of those questions. She can't even see too well with that mask on. See how she's gliding her hands to the other similar material? Seems a bit like she can barely see. She paints the material next. I don't know what it is, but I get Rob Zombie Michael Myers vibes when he had all those paper mache masks. The first point of view, she didn't have the mask on, and now she can only lightly paint it. Her hands become pure, and now she has pure white tendency. Something nobody understands. Later on, she lays on the floor, bouncing her brace. This is intercut with bluish footage of some man messing around with stuff. Messing around with a fish and sewing this animal leg. Eventually, the girl is outside. This place is a nightmare for all living things. The more I watch, the more random everything seems. Honestly, Begotten or Eraserhead was easier to understand. This just seems too random to me. Clearly, the girl has somewhere to go, and she's highly curious. She eventually makes her way to a room with numbers drawn on the wall. She comes to the edge of the room and starts the machine up. This machine some kind of radio she briefly fiddles with before leaving it behind. First, she's clearly on the building. Then, she's right back to this area, stabbing holes in one of the structures to get water out. Clearly curious, like I said. That's why I'm wondering if this is her first time in this area. Okay, now y'all just pissing me off. Is this the indication of a new day happening? It wouldn't make sense. As we get closer to the end, she's walking around picking flowers. She knows good and well she can't see them. I think the mask is debilitating for her. Feels like she can't take it off. It's molded to her, almost like some eternal punishment she never asked for. She throws the flowers away and walks to some unknown future. A small catchy song plays as the credits roll. You actually don't figure out that this little girl's name is Lindsay until the credits. The more you know. So yeah, a very surreal film that you can only theorize about with your own headcanon. Here is Sick Film, directed by Martin Creed. You can find this short film here on this website, but Mr. Creed is all about uncontrollable art for this short film. You know what you can't control? Vomit as it rushes out of your throat. Sick film shows random people walking into a blank space and vomiting their stomachs out. Don't worry, I won't show you any vomiting, but they actually do it. It's enough to make you sick. 
that's all I can say about it. <laughs> so if you want to see what happens, including all the messed up parts, stay tuned for the breakdown. Cue the go on. So I don't even remember how I found out about this film, but it starts with a girl happily coming onto camera to induce vomiting. Don't trip, you don't have to see it, but I do. After I drunk too much that one time, I got a bad relationship with vomiting. I hate how my body felt, but it, I think it's different when you shove your finger down your throat. Oh, and I hear everything. It makes me want to watch it on mute. It takes three minutes for her to get anything out until it moves on to a man who easily vomits on command. Like, did I mention it's terribly gross? He vomits a lot and it's blood red at the second spurt. What did you eat, sir? It's like he just vomited out organelles. Minutes after vomiting, he clearly keeps on trying to vomit just off the dirty smell alone before giving up. They clean up each time before someone else walks in. Some guy, he can't get anything out. And then another woman, she walks on vomiting something with oatmeal consistency. I'm sorry guys, but it's not any easier for me to watch it. She walked out soon after though to pick up her check. I hate vomiting so much that you couldn't even pay me to do it. Whatever they getting paid, it's not enough. Clearly not everybody hates rating their stomachs as much as I do though, so that's okay. Uncontrollable abstract expression. This is a form of art in progress for the filmmakers, the equivalent of watching people painting with random results. The sick form, I guess. 15 minutes in and there are so many men and women here. This girl right here vomits the most out of anyone. I'm talking like 8 vomit animations. And don't even get me started on this girl. She actually has a far worse and nastier vomit animation. If this is art, then I hate it with a passion. Finally, we get to the end about 18 minutes in. We see the official cleanup process and I can smell it from here. Reminds me back when I used to work at that Chuck E. Cheese ripoff. To clean up a lot of vomit and a lot of shit on the floor and on the ceiling one time. Vomit is a bitch to clean up because it smells bad and sometimes it's not just all liquid. Now, you probably thought it was over, but it's not. The film loops. I skipped through all of the footage, but after the second credits, there is something new. A coming soon screen. A girl walks on the screen, takes her pants off, and I'm sure you guys know where this is going. Yeah, they actually give you a sneak peek of her shitting on the floor. No ass wiping or nothing, just walking right off. Well, this was all made by Martin Creed. For him, art stems from feeling. Expressions come from this mix of anxiety and humor. Anyway, I see where he is coming from, and I can't deny him the expression, honestly. Those people that vomited on camera, they agreed to it and probably got paid for it. Now that we gotten through all these three films, let's talk about the most disturbed film and most enjoyed film and that spooky stuff. Cue the Gohan. Most disturbed film was definitely sick film. Listen, Mr. Creed, watching all them people vomiting only made me feel sick and anxious, and I'm not trying to do no art. That's the definition of being disturbed, right? Sick? Anxious? Nah, if they're used to vomit, then it's not too bad, I guess. It's just crazy how they were all so willing. Most enjoyed film was Adoration. I liked the way it was filmed, honestly. I mean, it's a short film. What more could you ask for? It was released at a time where Sagawa wasn't a cannibal celebrity, and it was clearly just a show, it's about the case. And that's about it. Three short films. Click that notification bell and stay tuned. I'll see you on Friday, I'll see you on next Monday, and I'll see you on next Friday. I've been busy. I've been busy this week. Check out some more double features I got for you right here. All Night Long 2 and Red Room 2. It's a favorite video of mine. Click the like button if you enjoyed and subscribe to see more messed up stuff. Thanks for watching. Spooky out.